hello hello and welcome to another Rangaroo cast, me Rangaroo, and today we are doing a 1v1 on paddy fields. So, on the left hand side, in blue, playing this blue four, we got ourselves Sidoron, and on the right hand side, in red, playing this red four, we have Duro SVK. As usual, let's uh, speed things up and get things going, as both sides deploy a uh, unit. And it does seem like Sidron is playing a doo -doo -doo. seems to be a Commonwealth deck. Roduro is going for the standard USSR. And a Ray Rigo. Nothing really too crazy. Got Ron Links moving out, gonna be capping the top hand side. And Sidron sending quite a lot of forces through the middle here. Some Craig Vickers and Aslavs. And getting into Bravo quite quickly. As uh, Duro is taking his time. Does have those slower vehicles and the BTRs are taking their time. And they got T-72 in the middle. And it's not really too heavy tank rise. Yeah, only the C-2. You do that Vickers which does have a rather deadly gun. Already taken 4 HP out of that B-1. And Sidoron does a very aggressive start, moving infantry through the Bravo Forest. Manson again to the bottom left forest in Gulf, which is always a very, very good position to be in. But fortunately for Duro, he does have the tower under his control. Fuselis, Highlanders going at it, but they are a little bit outgunned. BDVs outnumbering him. And 89 defending go for its long range ATGMs. Or cannon. And then nothing too major, both sides just contesting over the middle. Oduro is gaining that very nice plus run. Colonel's whole tower is not captured. Not yet anyway. We've got two CVs being brought out from Sidoron, so one's definitely going to go to Gulf and try to get that nice plus run. And again, enough CV to Bravo spend a lot of money on his command vehicles, which is, yes, already a good idea. But he won't really have the frontline units, because this is allowing Duro SVK to really get the infantry and other fire support in. It doesn't really seem that yeah, Sidoron has a great defensive line. You've got a few infantry guys spread in the forest and a C2 up in Gulf. And down here, he has a few territorials of other infantry, such as Highlanders and Commandos, a full on Commonwealth mix up. For once again, it always comes down to super heavy tanks, and I really hope he does bring out a Chally 2. Because you can never go wrong with a Chally 2. Such a fantastic piece of equipment. Especially now you can get four of them in a deck, which is absolutely ridiculous. We've got BTR 80, Scan Array, the re Recon. And a MiG 25 PD, keeping skies clear. Sidron being more infantry into the middle, just more territorials. We did like an East Reserve infantry. We've got the AS1 dealing damage to go flanking the recon units of Duro. And we've got mortars firing into Alpha, creating a smoke screen. So he's going to try to do some sort of offensive here, but. Well, it's Aslav, so they're moving up now. Smoke's definitely going to help clear cover from the right and up top. But, oh, he's... Is he, is he going to go? I mean, it's now or never. There we go, and into the town. Unloading the commandos for the reach of town. Duel with the uh, BTRD. And taking quite a few casualties right here. Spetsnaz group proving to be a difficult, tough nut. Tough nut. 
<laughs> Tough not to crack. Man, as I love that gun, that was a rather good uh, idea on paper, because usually no one ever attacks Alpha from the bottom, and if you can capture his town, you're pretty much good to go for Cap and the rest of Alpha. It's a great stronghold to take. But yeah, he's just one more commando infantry or a bit more reinforcements. Definitely could have helped. And now Cedron's trying to move through Gulf. And while the T-72s here and T-82Ks are definitely going to be a, well, annoying to deal with. And honestly, just by looking at it, I believe Cedron is playing a mechanized deck. Or... Oh. You haven't seen any super heavies. If you have a Saxon, it's like, that is a. No, he's just playing standard gem. Or motorized. And the territorials are moving through. With the help of some commandos. It definitely seems motorized. This is a lot of light armor and its infantry are quite more affected. It's going to be chasing the infantry. Territorials, I mean, they do have an extra vet due to the deck type, but third infantry are just a bad choice. I mean, it's not you or Alan Batch anymore, where the Swedish and Danish reserve infantry pretty much counters as regular line infantry tree for half the price. So basically you get them the one point transport, 11 points for just a cheap infantry unit. Yeah, that came in a 150 km hour vehicle. Well, it was pretty crazy, to say the least. We've got ADATs being brought from Sideron, which is surprisingly his best anti-tank unit so far. And he's bringing up a lot of infantry once again, and brother, the BDVs holding their ground. But just more territorials and he needs he needs more of these commandos to really take out point. T72B1 just having a bit of a uh, fun time shooting at the infantry as it gets well popped. And a very nice smoke screen there for the T82 K definitely don't know it's within that forest. Got Spetsner's Groove flanking up top, dealing with the commandos, getting a snipe and the kill on those buggers. And the MiG-25, well, doing the MiG-25 things. Yeah, rather passive mats, an overall crazy assault that rent successfully for both sides. Duro, just, you know, staying his ground. No crazy offensive, so that yeah, Boratino definitely has opened up some sort of attack. Moving in with Norath and T-72s. I mean, I think he unloaded the entire Boratino in that shot, yeah, damn. Dropping more smoke on the T-80 UK. Man, I, I guess it's hidden, but... A little bit obvious at the same time. You know, it does work, but it does stop it from being targeted from direct fire weapon. The only way to kill it is to bomb it. Which would probably be either Harrier. I believe it even has a like, four top armor. Let me check. No, it has three top armor, so a Harrier could kill it if it gets direct hits. But once again... You don't want to have any direct line of sight. And we've got, once again, a lot of infantry set down in the middle. Commandos may even want to move up the side rooms as well, just through a little bit of fire support. Every little helps. Maduro pretty much has Gulf completely under his control. He doesn't have anything firmly in the bottom left forest. You may want to think about getting some infantry guys in there, just for a future reference. And we've got an F1 on C. I think he's going to try and get that TA to UK. Or no, just bomb the town to bits. Get the Concourse M. And everything else. There we go. Completely <laughs> ripening out that place on the map. And Electro Voodoo trying to do something. But it does, well, not kill anything. Because it's not really much. Very got the AKMs. But I believe they turn up there. Rap and Jonathan Gus go back here, but you only need the missiles on and not the guns. So it is rather invisible to the pesky seed. And here we go, we got a lot of infantry moving in. Just territorials. Terror territorials. And by capping this town, it's going to definitely be one step into getting into Gulf. And how many territorials? That's going to be a 
lot to kill. An awful lot to kill. And force on the tanks back up the ridge. It does have the ADAS moving up and that NORAV is still here, getting a few pot shots from what it can see. Here it does get killed by the ADAT. And C 72s cresting over, giving fire support. That's C2 getting scientists by the Concourse. And then finish off by the T 72. And once again, he just does not have any heavy armor, so contesting these C-72s is pretty much not impossible. The C-2 Mexis just doesn't have the armor or really the firepower. I believe it has 16 or 18 AP. He's that from the teen AP, so it's kind of close. Which is good for a tank of that price, but again, these big buggers are not all that well. So you're going to really have to use those ATGMs and close-range rocket launchers to, to kill them. And they've got tier 2 UK being covered in the smoke screen. <laughs> Another one down here. Definitely a good idea using the tier 2 UK to say, oh, you know, very hard to kill. And those bombing runs. <laughs> bombing runs followed up by a Buratino. That is some score surf tactics right there. And the VDV is going to be moving through, seeing what they can salvage, kill the survivors. And that is a rather good run to punch here. So it's using IO-102, so I'll see those kind of sorts of drops in there as well. SU-24 Ami is the more desirable uh, carpet bomber plane. you got more shake of it and he doesn't have as much infantry. Ah, uh, well, roughly the same. But it's just, they're just they're shock infantry now, much better than the commandos and territorials. And he is moving through the, the Scorch Forest. Fire's still ablaze. B 288s flanking around, giving fire support. No, Sidoron does have a rather good hold and go for now. A lot of infantry in here still have the town under control and getting some Fusilier is 90, which is a good law 80s. And the SAS definitely helps out. Electric Voodoo's flying over, but just getting shot down here from the Ota AKMs. It's rather unusual, really, because it's a siege plane. BTI-80's moving right through, unloading the Russell Marines just in range of the town. Gonna be shots on the commandos here. Nothing really too much to stop him. Got an F-1 on the dropping in the heavy bombs. Only gonna be killing, running the half of Russell Marines squads right here. But if he's... Oh! Taking some cannon fire and a man as an inch air ray into the town. May want to still move so don't get shot by a leopard. So, well, leopard does get killed in C72B1. And the rest of Marines are supporting on to their ground, even the mortar. Proving some fire support, yeah, if it's a little GM general purpose machine gun. And they are moving in, managing to just steal a man catty. And now using it to heal up the rest of Marines. Oh god, yeah, it, it does blow up his own logistical vehicle, taking one for the team, yeah. I guess that's technically a friendly fire. Oh, oh getting cluster bombed, and then probably SAS, I believe, yeah, the UK going down. I mean, that was one problem with the smoking, is that he didn't make it obvious, but it also covers your advance for infantry to get in close and blow it up. And then we got smoke dropping into the northern forest, trying to sneak the territorials in there, but it's going to take them a lot of bit because reserve infantry also move extremely slow. At only 15 kilometers an hour. I think I could run faster than that. I think. But anyway, map pretty much split. We got blue cap in top and a red down bottom. But Duro is in the lead by points by 50 is, which is quite a good point lead to have. There's lots of smoke in Draco here. And I, this is actually quite amusing because the infantry focus player manages to capture Gopher, which is more of a tank-centric area. And the more tankist player manages to capture Bravo, 
which is a more infantry centric area. Here we've got the bombing runs completely ripping out that town once again. Definitely not prime real estate. And we got all for moving over. Gonna be getting shots on Lapid G2, completely racking in. There's no armor, bro. This is C2. But nothing heavy to stop these heavy tanks. We've got an Opera and a BU now. We're bringing up Lynx 3 to try to get the AT support with the Hellfire missiles. Scaring the radio Opera. Getting some very good hits. He gets straight from by an MLT, but he does survive the Hornets. Chasing after the PD, but the PD does manage to get the kill. We've got MAH moving through, clearing out the C2s. Flying right over with their crazy rocky pew pew pews. Just getting kill after kill the S13s, G3s, but the Vickers and the Athletes. You managed to shoot it down with our machine gun, BTR ATA. Sniping a CV in the hotel in a rather sneaky beaky flanking maneuver. And it looks like, is this going to be a GG to Duro? We got IO 102s finishing off the job, wiping out that forest. Links for ease, killing the BTR ATA, getting a revenge. And the answer will pretty much be a good game. 2 0, taking the victory by a whopping 2,000 points, yeah. And yeah, Sidron definitely was playing a motorized mechanized, some sort of infantry. Style deck, but once again, as per usual, came down to heavy tanks, and Sideron just didn't have heavy tanks available in his deck. Or I didn't even—I don't think you can get Harrier GR7s in a motorized deck. Maybe, because those definitely would have helped to deal in those heavy tanks. But yeah, I think the best case scenario of his said deck was to push down into bottom and try to get into Alpha, try to keep those forest and town sectors under his control and but i think he really he really shouldn't have used territorials and got some more standard infantry to be his front line but yeah an interesting match for both sides and i'm gonna leave it off at yet this has been another rangaroo cast i hope you guys enjoyed the video and as usual please just take it easy